Welcome to the first robotics competition, first in Michigan award show. Part of the first Game Changers, powered by Star Wars, Force for Change season. Congratulations to all teams for competing in such a challenging season. Today, we will be announcing the awards for the Game Design Challenge, Infinite Recharge at Home, and the first Innovation Challenge, sponsored by Qualcomm. Additionally, we will be presenting our traditionally submitted awards. DT is a proud sponsor of FIRST. We know that by investing in FIRST, we're investing in a brighter future. Here at DTE, we've had to adapt to new ways of working, and the same goes for FIRST. Students have continued to be involved and learn the values that are so important to FIRST and to us as a company. Essentially, our captains took the lead and initiative to really make sure the rest of the team were able to be able to experience FIRST uh, despite being virtual. Working together separately is a big thing we had to learn this year. We had to learn how to teach each other things, uh, but without being too hands-on. I would say uh, the team has been really creative with what they can actually do virtually. Where we send out wires and everything that they would need to like learn a little bit about wiring stuff, and the new members were able to like learn something new that they can carry on. Our team demonstrates the core values of birth by keeping in communication with one another. We're all a team, meaning we're all family. So especially during these times, we like to check if one another is okay. Our team's been innovative this year in coming up with the ways that we're still able to host practices, social distancing, holding practices less often, and still finding ways to collaborate well to make sure that we're all working together and having a good learning experience. We're looking forward to seeing everyone in person very soon. But until then, congratulations on an incredible year, and we are so inspired at DTE for all that you have accomplished. Thank you. This season, our teams and sponsors have had to create some new and exciting innovations. Here in our own innovation station is Chris Foster's. Thank you, Brian, and welcome aboard the Innovation Station. Innovation Station is the place to meet a few interesting people connected to First in Michigan and to hear about some of the cool stuff they're doing. We'd also like to thank all of our local sponsors. Couldn't do it without you. We've got a great program planned for you today, including some amazing guests. So stand by and get ready to dock onto Innovation Station. Thanks, Chris. Looking forward to hearing those stories and more. And now here to recognize first supporters for the first Game Changers, powered by Star Wars, Force for Change season is Blair from First Headquarters. Every year, first and you benefit from the support of hundreds of generous sponsors, suppliers, scholarship providers, and alliances. We deeply appreciate their commitment and dedication and are especially grateful during this challenging season. A big thanks to everyone who makes FIRST, FIRST.
And now, a word about careers. Many companies are interested in hiring FIRST students and alumni, so be sure to share your FIRST experience on your resume and in interviews. Find out more at www.firstinspires.org alumni. And finally, before we start announcing the awards, we have one more special guest with a quick shout out. Here's FIRST founder, Dean Kamen. As I do at the end of every season, I'd like to start by thanking the parents, the mentors, the teachers, the sponsors for helping give these kids this opportunity to have the hardest fun they'll ever have. I am aware each year of how much work it takes, how much grit it takes, but you always surpass our expectations. Congratulations to everybody and let's celebrate the season we just finished and I'll see you all next year when we make it even more exciting. Our first award is the Rookie Design Award. This award celebrates a rookie team's outstanding success in the Game Design Challenge. Here are what the judges had to say about our award winners. This team brought the carnival to life through their enthusiasm about their game. Their research of past games and extensive whiteboarding of ideas led to a fun and entertaining game design with classic carnival components. Hear them roar. The Rookie Design Award goes to team 8314, The Roar from Carsonville and their game, Carnival Madness. This rookie team has started their FRC career with a solid foundation. With blocks, cranes, and towers, they've created a way for alliances to shape their own successes. Bears meet robots for their concept, Construction Chaos, the game where everyone's a builder. Congratulations to team 8124, Bearbots from Wyandotte. Our next award is the Creativity Award, sponsored by Rockwell Automation. And now here's a word from our longtime first sponsor, Rockwell Automation. Hi, I'm JV Mosley, first alum and current mentor and now engineering intern at Rock Automation. I'm working on 3D modeling, metal fabrication, as well as var managing various die cast operations. Congratulations on your accomplishments during this unique season. I'd like to give a shout out to the Creativity Award winners who exemplify the spirit of FIRST programs using science and technology, but using critical thinking and problem solving skills for the win. This award celebrates creativity that enhances the overall game design concept. Here are what the judges had to say about our award winners. This team set the gold standard for creativity in game design. Their clever field layout combined with their exciting gameplay and plundering scoring ideas helped set this game apart. It is hoped that this team treasures this award as they relax in their hammocks this summer. Congratulations, Team 3656 Dreadbots from Dexter for the game Shipwrecked Salvage. This team created a game which integrated with our current environment in mind. Not only was it done well, but their game will keep most audience electrified with excitement even through turbulent currents. Congratulations to Team 5436, Cybercats from Rochester. This team's game took inspiration from the Seven Seas. The judges hadn't seen anything like the unique wall climb and the tasks for the human players. This team really stood out from the pack. Congratulations to Team 8.30, The Rat Pack from Ann Arbor. When it comes to pure creativity, this team was at the peak of their game. With unique color changing game pieces, they cleaned up both the competition and the environment. From the green prairies to the golden fields, this team blitzed past other contenders to take home the Creativity Award. Congratulations to Team 
4776. Scott's Bots from Hell. This is one gem of a team. They created a game designed for FRC and tied their theme through all first programs. This team knows how to use their dynamite. Congratulations to team 5203, Volatile Chaos Inhibitors from Sanford. Winning the Creativity Award can sometimes feel like trying something precious while stumbling in the dark. You want to find something truly unique and stay away from any ideas that are in the spotlight. If you are able to break the code and grab hold of the right ideas, your creativity can really take off. The Creativity Award goes to Team 5901, Cougar Pack from Detroit, for their game, Spy vs. Spy. The Engineering Design Award. This award celebrates the team that demonstrates sound engineering in their design process. Here are what the judges had to say about our award winners. This team's research and analysis ensured a dense level of play. They coupled relatable robot actions with randomized elements to keep the action hot. This team engineered a gem of a game. Congratulations to Team 2619, The Charge, from Midland. Step right up, one and all, to the marvels of this team that hails from the North Sea. They weaseled their way through the workings of a game by considering how the mechanics of the game worked and prototyping its components. These Nordic warriors ducked obstacles at, to create game challenges worthy of the midway. Congratulations team 2054, Tech Vikes from Hopkins with their game, First Carnival. Start your engines and join this race. This team used their five-step design process and fleshed out submission for their readers to think that their game could become a reality. Get your squad together to play this game Congratulations to Team 3604, the Goon Squad from Brownstown. When designing a game, it was clear that this team did their reading. Their field design, strategic planning, and realism were too hot to handle. With their sound engineering process, no technical difficulties were too hard for them. Congratulations to Team 1502, technical difficulties from Chelsea. By setting broad game principles at the start, this team charted a course to a successful submission that brings new meaning to the term water game. Their comprehensive and detailed design process ensured a functional and feasible game for teams, spectators, and volunteers. This team sailed past all trouble and we would rush to play this game. Congratulations to Team 27, Team Rush from Clarkston. This team didn't have to scramble when trying to design their game. They systematically went through the complete engineering design process, breaking out into subgroups, having a master schedule, and breaking the task into smaller pieces. This team proves with strong collaboration and communication, the ship won't wreck. Congratulations to team 3357, Comets from Grand Rapids. This team found a hidden gem of an idea, they anchored themselves around strategy dictating design, giving them polished engineering principles that will become an artifact to be treasured for years to come. This team managed to recover their ideas from the bottom of the sea and polish them into a shining gem. Congratulations to Team 4362 CSPA Gems from Brighton. Protecting their treasure is paramount to defending this team's island. By successfully defeating raiding pirates, their alliance reclaimed the precious coin and gems. As they navigated their alliance back to the ship, they raised the anchor and set sail to new adventures. Congratulations to Team 4216, Blue Ops Robotics from Jackson. Game design was no barrier for this team as they flowed into the fray. Their V-model development cycle caused the judges to erupt with applause and their scale models forged the way to victory. This team was both first on the scene and first on the judges list. Congratulations to team 5114, Titanium Tigers from Fenton. This team managed to survive to the end by taking charge of their design processes. They created an exceptional game and reaped the benefits of the seeds that they stored. 
we raise a flag to this team as their attention to detail was far from average. Congratulations to team 3620, Average Joes from St. Joseph. This team is a huge fan of renewable energies and took on the challenge to tackle the crisis when things started to warm up. They are resourceful and prototype field elements to assure functionality, innovation, and fun, while making it challenging for all types of robots. They harness climatic strength by multiples of pi without using their sword. Congratulations to Team 1076, Pi High Samurai from Ann Arbor. The daunting task of designing a game had many teams feeling under water. The obstacles presented led this team to stall before thinking of creative solutions. They elevated their game and broke through the maze of challenges. Congratulations to Team 6078, Robo Rams from Holt, our Engineering Design Award winner. This past year has made most people panic but this team's research and impressive calculations gave them a window of clarity. Their design made their judges nostalgic for a childhood playground. Congratulations to 226, the Hammerheads from Troy. Now let's check in with Chris at the Innovation Station. Here at the Innovation Station, we have our partners from DTE, who are involved with FIRST on so many levels. We have a few folks with us to share their FIRST story. So let's start with Tracy DeSanto, who manages the FIRST Robotics Partnership. Tracy, can you share some of the ways that DTE is involved with FIRST? Thank you, Chris. FIRST Robotics is DTE's signature partnership. Our investment in FIRST is an investment in the future of our company and in the communities where we live and serve. This includes DTE's foundation sponsorship of FIRST events and financial support for our teams, which typically are teams that have barriers to participate. And we engage our employees and retirees so that they can get involved in volunteering, mentoring, and coaching. Well, thank you, Tracy, and that's great stuff. And we certainly thank DTE Energy for their sponsorship and their involvement. And we've got Ryan from DTE and his daughter, Julia, welcome. Ryan, as Tracy stated, FIRST is obviously a very big part of your strategy for growing and attracting talent, and I suspect that's because DTE Energy is working on solving critical issues that will affect the future of our planet. Can you tell us about that? The DTE Energy is right at the forefront of helping this country uh, decarbonize the economy. So when we say that, we mean wind farms, solar panels, electric vehicles, and to be able to take all those new sources of energy and new uses uh, for clean energy and be able to integrate them onto our electric grid presents a lot of really uh, tough technical challenges and how the grid works in real time. Those are pretty important issues. Being a chemical engineer must have led you to your job at DTE Energy, I would imagine. How did you arrive on being a chemical engineer? Yeah, I was thinking back like high school and trying to figure out what it was I wanted to do. You know, I was good at chemistry and math, so a counselor said, oh, well, you should be an engineer. All right, so then I became a, chem a chemical engineer without really understanding at all what the job or what the, the field really entailed. Well, Julia, I know your dad was hoping you would follow in his footsteps, but you chose to go in a different direction because FIRST helped you explore all of the options out there so you could find what you loved. You know, I'd always heard about my dad being a chemical engineer. Like, he would always talk about being in labs and all these cool experiences. And I was like, oh, that's cool for you, but I don't know if that's for me. <laughs> but getting to do FIRST and see other engineers who do different things in a wide variety of applications, from the more technical to the more human engineering was really influential for me just to see more examples of engineering. So you chose to study industrial engineering at the U of M instead. Why? Well, one thing that I really love about industrial and operations engineers is the wide variety of career opportunities in different industries. I would consider myself a bit indecisive. So having the option to do a variety of different things once I graduate is really appealing to me. And industrial engineering, that's a pretty technical field. How did your first experience influence that choice? I'm really grateful for the opportunity to approach technical problems in a positive environment where I wasn't afraid to fail or to do badly. I was just there to learn, and that was really impactful for me. 
yeah, having a safe place to fail is always great. I mean, why do you think they put me here? Were there other parts of FIRST you thought were impactful as well? I'd say two parts. The first part, working on a team with just my team, with a bunch of different people from different grades, from people who took different classes from me, and getting to just share one common experience was really important. But then additionally, working at competitions, collaborating with people I'd never met with to like try to win the competition. Was so learning how to quickly um, express my ideas and quickly listen to other people's ideas was also very important. It is very important. And, and Ryan, you see this as a, a super important part of FIRST as well. Yeah, the ability to communicate your ideas and then to get other people to see them and then to get them lined up to working together is one important. And it's probably a really underrated part of, uh, of the robotics experience. And I think those are kind of a set of skills that just become so applicable in, in lots of different areas of career. So with everything you just said, Ryan, it's easy to understand why DTE invests heavily in FIRST. How will FIRST figure into DTE Energy's future? We're going to continue to need lots of engineers to help us work on optimizing and creating solutions, both so that the grid can run better, uh, that we can help uh, facilitate clean energy across our area as well as across the country and, and to be able to help deliver more reliable and better products uh, for our customers. Michigan benefits, the whole country, the whole world benefits. Tracy, Ryan, Julia, thank you so much for joining us aboard Innovation Station. Let's get back to some more awards. The Imagery Award in honor of Jack Kamen. This award celebrates attractiveness in engineering and outstanding visual aesthetic integration from the machine to the team appearance. Here are what the judges had to say about our award winners. Thirsty for a water game? This team made a splash with their island adventure. Lifesavers and pirates kept this game afloat. Congratulations to team 5066, Singularity from Selene. This team tackled their field design, logo, and game manual thoughtfully, reaching the end zone of all things aesthetic. Their game design not only looks like the real thing, but sounds like it too, right down to the horns, whistles, and cheering crowd. These young recruits have definitely earned their place in the major leagues. Congratulations to team 6861, the Tyros team from Livonia. Out of the forest of entries, this team's cohesive imagery stood a cut above the rest. Their game grew from the seeds of their iconic branding to create a memorable theme connecting gameplay, field, and presentation. We certainly saw that there's no milling about when it comes to a bold creative direction for Timber Mountain Takedown. Congratulations to team 5926, Da Moose from Port Huron. When looking for a team who could really show off their game design, X marked the spot. With their anchor and sail raised, logo t-shirts demonstrating a cohesive crew, and their flags flying, we judges could actually imagine ourselves at sea. This team is gathering their well-deserved plunder, even if they have to walk the plank to get it. Congratulations to team 6121, Robovikes from Grayling, and their game, Pirates Plunder. The Concept Award. This award celebrates a team that creates an interesting, realistic game concept to the team appearance. Here are what the judges had to say about our award winners. This team created a gem of a game with realistic water element. They mined through the requirements and created a highly developed, unique, and challenging game for all levels of competition with exciting human player responsibilities. We're seeing red and ready for the showdown. Congratulations, the winner of the Concept Award goes to Team 85, Bob Built on Brains from Zealand. This team saved foliage as they crafted a story that focused on a sustainable future. They fought every obstacle by using detailed design and available game elements. Hanging on by a chain, they are lifted to victory after they douse the fire zones. Congratulations to Team 5708, Zebrotix from Ann Arbor. Presented with a sticky challenge of designing a game, this team showed their power over the competition. They soared in creating a dynamic and even delicious game that incorporates goal shifting, multiple end game challenges, and creative use of the element. With eagle eye attention to detail, their game really takes the cake. Congratulations to team 3322, 
Eagle Imperium from Ann Arbor with their game, Ultimate Pancake. On their carpet of bright ocean blue, many levels can be played by you and your crew. The coins go in the fishnet, and the keys are in the barrel. If the volcano explodes, your team will be in peril. So grab your gems and man your battle stations, head to the rickety raft and wish. Congratulations to team 4967, that one team, our next engineers from Belmont. This team used all their members to pilot a fun and exciting game for any team of any skill level. Through their rigorous design process, they worked to put their strategic thinking to effective use. These agents for STEM truly flew away with the competition. Congratulations to team 302, the Dragons from Lake Orion. This team wants to keep you safe from exposure by sending robots to do your household chores. Teams must watch out for their chain as they send their robots to work with human players to get access to supplies. They'll show you how to keep stocked up through any situation as you shop till you drop. Congratulations to Team 2767 Strike Force from Kalamazoo. The immersive theme and unique concept of this game design demonstrated that this wasn't monkeying around. It was clear to the judges that this game was designed for all skill levels and with a wide variety of strategies in mind. The animals of the rainforest will continue to thrive thanks to the resupply missions led by this team. Congratulations to Team 33, the Killer Bees from Auburn Hills. The Designers Award. This award celebrates a team's outstanding success with the Game Design Challenge. Here's what the judges had to say about the winner of this award. This team proves that they're a force to be reckoned with, so much that their game looks first authentic. Accounting for every detail from the game pieces to the rules, the team even made an awesome video to bring it all together. This team really thinks before it leaps, just as frogs do. Congratulations to Team 503, Frog Force from Novi. Great work, Team 503, on that game design. And now, a quick word about FIRST scholarships. Nearly 200 colleges and universities make available over $80 million in scholarships, specifically for FIRST participants and alumni. So apply, apply, apply. Now, let's check in with Chris at the Innovation Station. No matter your dreams, FIRST will get you there. And my next guest, while not necessarily a dream weaver, is definitely a dream maker. Meet Eric Poppy, co-founder of the Dream Maker Fund. Eric, thanks so much for joining us aboard Innovation Station. Happy to join you today. All right, let's just start with the basics, Eric. Tell us what the Dream Maker Fund is, and you started it with your wife, Patty, but why? We decided to take some of our good fortune and help amplify the, the work that FIRST does because we know it's uh, a really good way to, to get students a better opportunity to see and experience STEM careers. Well, it's incredibly generous. How does the fund support FIRST? Well, we take about 50% of what we grant through the Jackson Community Foundation and the DreamMaker Fund each year, and that goes directly to FIRST to help kids find careers in STEM and uh, also recruit mentors to support FIRST in Michigan. Well, I just think it's the coolest thing. And how did this idea come to you and why was FIRST a perfect fit? What we had the opportunity to do is watch our daughters go through uh, a FIRST FRC team. And then I got hooked myself by deciding to stay at the shop one day when I dropped them off. And then I became a mentor and I've been a mentor for 10 years. So we know very much firsthand just how effective they are at exposing kids who might not otherwise have any chance to know what a STEM career is or even think it's something they might want to do. And it just seemed like a perfect fit for us. 
Eric, could you talk a little bit about your wife's journey? She is now, of course, a CEO, but Patty started her career as an engineer, like perhaps a lot of students in our audience will as well. And what do you think it means about her career climb, especially as a, as a woman in the industry? Yeah, she started as an engineer at General Motors and then transitioned to the energy industry and was able to work her way up to the CEO role. The STEM background, the engineering background, gave her a foundation that helps her dissect whatever the problem is. You're really doing technical problem solving. And so it doesn't matter if that problem is engineering or if it's taking a financial problem and helping define it and get your team to think about it. Those, those skills translate very well to leadership. Yes, and, and first, with its $80 million in college scholarships, certainly helps entice students in that direction. But there are great opportunities out there for people to get right into the skilled trades after high school. Can you talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. Great point. So what I was able to see firsthand through my career in the automotive business in our uh, vehicle assembly plants, the skilled trades guys were the, the, the people that could make things happen. Uh, literally, the auto plants can't run without them and same thing in the energy industry. And so we have kids that specialize in machining parts or the electronics and just understanding how things work and being able to put it together and make it work and diagnose it. Those are things that skilled trades do really, really well. Well, the Dream Maker Fund is doing its part to support FIRST, but what is your message to other businesses about getting involved and, and backing FIRST in Michigan? Well, if you're looking for just a great partner that has de developed a, a process all the way from elementary through high school to expose kids to STEM, to develop them for the careers they have in their, in their industries. It's, it's an excellent way and very efficient way to put dollars to work and develop kids that have the skills they need. Well, Eric, you and your wife, Patty, you're making dreams come true for Michigan's young people and the industry as a whole. First is so thankful for the support of the Dream Maker Fund. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. It was great to have you on today. Our pleasure. Thanks. That ends this update from Innovation Station, but stand by for future reports. Now, back to more award-winning action. Our next award is the Autonomous Award sponsored by Ford. And now let's hear from them. Hi, I'm Laura Sainholtz from Team 1522 in Mechanicsville, Virginia. And today I work as an aerodynamics engineer at Ford Motor Company. We created the Autonomous Award because we believe that advances in robotics and automation are going to have a profound and positive impact for our vehicles and for society. Underscoring this belief, we recently opened the Ford Robotics Building at the University of Michigan, where, a lot, where our researchers will work alongside students and faculty to make this future a reality. It's so exciting to see how this award has inspired teams to go further in their automation, and we'd like to congratulate all the winners of the 2021 Autonomous Award. This award celebrates the team that has demonstrated consistent, reliable, high-performance robot operation during the autonomously managed actions. Evaluation is based on the robot's ability to sense its surroundings, position itself or onboard mechanisms appropriately, and execute tasks. Here are what the judges had to say about our award winners. This team made software look easy as pie. Their autonomous features can autonomously pick up balls and shoot. The judges were impressed with this frozen menace. Congratulations to Team 910, the Foley Freeze from Madison Heights. Using a shooter that rotates 360 degrees and a variety of sensors and cameras, this team autonomously launches power cells into the target from any zone. Congratulations to Team 5460, Strike Zone from Lapeer. When tasked with automating smooth driving or accurate shooting, this team chose both. Their control system adjusts their turret's aim to match their body's motion, allowing their robot to shoot on the fly. Congratulations to Team 3536, the Electro Eagles from Heartland. This winning team had a shooter that reminded the judges of a cobra's hood. While the stakes were high, this team made the judges blink in pleasant surprise at the quality and speed of their autonomous routine. When most designs are hardly amusing, 
This team could turn on a dime thanks to its custom frame to milk points from the game. Congratulations to Team 5050 Cowtown Robotics from Carlton. This team demonstrated in a live 2020 competition, successfully shooting three balls into the high goal, moving the robot to reload three additional balls, and successfully shooting all three additional balls through the high goal from a different location. Their software took advantage of vision tracking and motion profiling, which allowed for the ball grabbing, auto detection, and determination of shoot angle and velocity. This was a most impressive robot machine that is well deserving of this award. Congratulations to Team 3538, Robo Jackets from Auburn Hills. You won't find knights to go up against this beast of a robot. With wings on either side and eyes to find gold, they could search the galaxy for power cells to hoard. These dragons don't need any assistance to navigate the autonomous award. Congratulations to Team 302, the Dragons from Lake Orion. With field-centric adaptive holonomic swerve drive, this bot can shoot autonomously from anywhere on the field, even while moving. With an elegant spindexer, this bot's unjamming mechanism hops up to the challenge. With all autonomous programs written by freshman team members, they may be green, but they are a force to be reckoned with. Congratulations to Team 503, Frog Force from Novi. This robot's abilities are of mythical proportions. This multi-headed beast can pick up power cells from both the front and back, accurately scoring into the heavens from down in the underworld. Their clever use of goal tracking and ingenious implementation of ordered maps leaves no doubt this team's autonomous wood shine in the dark. Their high-flying autonomous leaves no room for error in battle. Congratulations to Team 1684, the Chimeras from Lapeer. This team's autonomous functions gleamed like a knight in shining armor. From multiple vision systems to automatic indexing, their robot is equipped for battle. Their auto-aligning turret is sure to turn heads when it rolls onto the field. Congratulations to Team 4237, Team Lancebot from Stevensville. This team employed a pure pursuit algorithm with odometry to smoothly navigate the field during autonomous action. The robot utilized artificial intelligence for real-time object tracking and simulations verified their pathing. With selectable autonomous routines and acceleration limiters to ensure their robot stayed on target, this team roved through the field with ease. Congratulations to Team 4004, Mars Rovers from Muskegon. This team darted around the course, shooting power cells with precision. Their robot hustled and zoomed along a path it determined automatically scooping and shooting in a rush. Congratulations to Team 27, Team Rush from Clarkston. Shooting three balls was not enough for this team. They sought out additional power cells to maximize their score. The accuracy obtained by their turret vision allows them to strike their target with precision. This team won't be caged in despite being from the zoo. Congratulations to Team 2767, Strike Force from Kalamazoo. Now let's check in with Chris at the Innovation Station. Give it up one more time for our Autonomous Award winners. And if you're ready to go further, maybe even be more autonomous, then listen to these two pros from Ford. Meet Craig Stevens and Laura Sainholtz, both from Ford Motor Company. Craig and Laura, welcome to the Innovation Station. It's good to be here with you. Thanks. Hi, Craig. Thanks. Why is it important for Ford to invest in First in Michigan and the Autonomous Award? So we have been working on autonomous vehicles for a lot longer than people think. We have then partnered with Argo, who's a leader in autonomous vehicles. But also on top of that, we have the technologies that we're putting in our vehicles today to make people uh, safer, to make them more relaxed when they drive. We just introduced a feature called Blue Cruise, which allows people on uh, certain sections of road to actually drive hands off as long as they have got their eyes on the road so they can watch the situation. So it's a very big uh, commitment and direction for us as a company. Does this direction that you talk about bring robotics to the forefront at Ford? Robots are things that we're interested in. We have them in our assembly plants for decades. 
we're building autonomous vehicles and we're also doing our own work on, on robots for things like package delivery. I understand there is a brand new Ford Robotics building on the campus of U of M. Ford itself occupies the fourth floor for collaboration with U of M and other industry leaders on robotics research and engineering. How did that come about? Robotics is just developing so fast. It just seemed to be a huge opportunity for us to get closer to some of the people who are doing the research and partner in a way that maybe industry and universities have never done before. And so we had this opportunity with the University of Michigan and um, we think this is going to allow us to absolutely accelerate bringing technology um, into production and it's going to give us access to some of this fantastic talent that's out there. Well, and speaking of talent, Laura is now a full-time engineer with Ford and was on a first team in high school. What are some of the great memories of first you carry with you, Laura? Yeah, in 2011, uh, we played the Logomotion game. I was a senior that year. We got to the finals. We won the first two out of the three matches. And I, you know, that was six years ago at this point. I still remember exactly who I was standing next to. And I remember the exact moment that the final scores flashed up on that board and I will remember it forever. It's one of my favorite memories of my career. <laughs> Why do you think it's important for students to get involved with FIRST in high school? In high school, you're 15, 16, you have such a limited view of the world. Through FIRST, you can really kind of figure out what you're passionate about, what you're interested in, and what, what kind of gives you that spark and that joy. Why should women especially get involved? When you look at some of these robotics teams, there's not always someone that looks just like you. Um, that's something that we really are working on. The more diverse a team is, the more experience that you bring in, the better um, output you're going to have. So I think it's important for involvement of not only girls, but people of different backgrounds, races, ethnicities, etc. Yes, absolutely. And, and Laura, what are some cool things you're working on right now in aerodynamics at Ford that Take you back to when you were in a first competition. So actually, before we were talking today, I was in the wind tunnel getting a vehicle prepped and ready to test next week. We make them fully out of clay, basically. We can shape them in the tunnel and we make changes as we get data. So it's really similar to a first competition. You, you go out, you try something, you see if it works. If it does, great, let's improve on it. If it doesn't, okay, put it back the way it was and we'll try again. And that's exactly what I do every day. From first, I really developed that passion. So um, definitely direct me, directly led to where I am right now. Robotics and autonomous vehicles, both a big part of Ford's future. And first is preparing you for exactly that. Thank you for spending some time with us today. Be good, do good, and take care. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was our pleasure. Bye. Well, enough of me. The Quality Award is up next, and I'll see you at your next Innovation Station break. The Quality Award. This award celebrates machine robustness in concept and fabrication. Here are what the judges had to say about our award winners. Robustness in design is a hallmark of a quality robot, and this team did not disappoint the judges. The robot never put the team in the doghouse or had them seeing red in competition. The winner of the Quality Award will leave a legacy with their engineering skills. Congratulations to team 2337, the engine nerds from Grand Blanc. This team is proud of their custom made quick change gearbox. With their advanced control system capable of sensing targets, this robot is truly aware of its surroundings. Look to the skies because this team's quality plan for workmanship is taking them to new heights. The quality award goes to team 3641, the flying toasters from South Lion. Built like a tank, they can do anything well. Testing robustness and modularity help this evil empire excel. Their quality isn't just good, it's great with a capital G. Congratulations to team 5216, Evil Empire from Essexville. This team took the kit bot to the ultimate evolution. From a redundant ground and loading bay intake to a polycarbonate shield that prevents them from running over power cells, this robot is prepared for every wavelength of obstacle. The Quality Award goes to Team 3572, a wavelength from Norton Shores. Coindexter might be jealous of this revamped robot. 
refined and simplified so it's easy to use and quick to repair. These cool cats will not be painting themselves into a corner. The quality award goes to team 2137, the Oxford RoboCats from Oxford. Off-season exploration helped this team design a modular and easy to maintain robot. Meticulous CAD processes and precision machining helped bring this ball mauling machine to life. The bark is nowhere near as bad as this bulldog's bite. Congratulations to team 3539, Biting Bulldogs from Romeo. With a welded steel frame and fault preventing control system, this team incorporated quality in all aspects of the robot's design and construction. In competition, this team never dreads the opportunity to showcase their strengths. Congratulations to Team 3656, Dreadbots from Dexter. When this team's robot breaks down, it causes no friction. Rare sightings of LEDs warn that a system is scorched and in need of attention. This sizzling team should be proud for roasting the competition. Congratulations to Team 67, the Hot Team from Highland. With their swerve drive, they showcased quality. Their bot pushed it to the limit nightly to test their durability. They've built a robust legacy for team members to come. Congratulations to team 141, Whoa Bot from Holland. This team has understood reliability, repairability, and ease of access, allowing them to go with the flow when others would panic. Many teams wowed the judges with their additive manufacturing, but this team's worm gears have inched them ahead of the competition. They have bonded together while demonstrating quality is more than the sum of their parts, like a family. Congratulations to team 4405, the Adams family from Canton. Our next award is the Industrial Design Award sponsored by General Motors. This award celebrates the team that demonstrates industrial design principles, striking a balance between form, function, and aesthetics. Here are what the judges had to say about our award winners. This team's sleek machine can rotate parts even while coming to a halt on the field. Each well-designed component flocked together to create one extraordinary robot that could tackle any challenge as easy as one, two, four. They track their prey with the vision of a hawk. Congratulations to Team 2834, Bionic Blackhawks from Bloomfield Township. This team assessed the robot shooter performance and knew it needed to be better than any old Joe. With data driving their tuning, they perfected their shot. This team is anything but average. The winner of the Industrial Design Award is Team 3620, Average Joes from St. Joseph. It is a tough task to exemplify industrial design, but this swarm of busy students got it done. Their robot possesses an elegant ball harvester, a sweet shooting mechanism, and a sharp custom chassis that will sting the competition. They have proven that their method of iterative design can result in an incredibly stunning robot fit for a queen. Congratulations to Team 33, the Killer Bees from Auburn Hills. Coming from a small town didn't stop them from being big winners. They were leading the competition with their ability to pass power cells to another robot. Their climbing mechanism, which used a dual stage cascade, rose above others. Congratulations to team 3668, Trobots from Whitmore Lake. Don't let this robot's blue appearance get you down. Its speedy drivetrain carries automated intake and shooter mechanisms, plus a dual stage climber. When it comes to this robot's design, the devil is in the details. Congratulations to Team 4130, the Blue Devils from Richmond. Racing around, shooting power cells as quickly as it picks them up, this robot's impressive dual intake and great design uses optimized materials for a sleek and efficient ride. This is one vehicle that is made, not manufactured. Congratulations to Team 5086, Cadillac Connectors from Cadillac. We were looking for a shooting star and found one during this team's presentation about their prototyping process and design strategy. They were a universe apart this year, but still managed to eclipse the competition with their professional looking design and their custom built parts. With their polished pulley system and turret style shooter, they've got the industrial design award in their orbit. Congratulations to team 3357, Comets from Grand Rapids. 
Here's a quick word from General Motors. Congratulations, FIRST Robotics Industrial Design Award winner from General Motors. The Excellence in Engineering Award. This award celebrates the team that demonstrates professional approach to the design process. Here's what the judges had to say about our award winners. This team wowed the judges with the results of their excellent engineering process. Of all the robots on the Pleasant Peninsula, theirs never let their team down. For this team, V is for victory. Congratulations to team 5114, Titanium Tigers from Fenton. This award goes to a team who was able to show their design process from when the challenge was announced to designing their robot. They were able to explain how the team is split off to work on different components and how things get managed. Through the use of Gantt charts and staying out of the red, the Excellence in Engineering Award goes to Team 4390, ATA Core Gears from Dearborn. Triangulating on the target and spinning the turret to the optimum power cell trajectory requires the right process and an acute awareness of the environment. This team may have three sides, but they are never obtuse. Their well-engineered robot has sound solutions to every game dimension. The Excellence in Engineering Award goes to Team 4003, Trisonics from Allendale. This team's numerical, not emotional decision-making process set up their possibilities for success. Their cat-like reflexes gave them the ability to constantly adjust designs and quickly react to change. Numerous 3D printed parts and a slick 360 degree turret allowed for this bot to run solo. Congratulations to Team 6591, Panther Powered Robotics from Stockbridge. This team had a well thought out design process that they were able to present to the judges during their interview. Their overall presentation was professional and they were capable of expanding on the design issues brought up. Their enthusiasm for the subject was evident, as was their pride in their robot's capabilities, making this team the obvious choice for the Excellence in Engineering Award. Congratulations to Team 573, Mech Warriors from Bloomfield Hills. This team lit up with every step of their design process. They were leaders in practical and elegant design, with lightning fast shooting at 30 feet, and when pushed off track, self-corrected in a flash. They struck us as a team that truly reflects excellence in engineering. Congratulations to Team 862, Lightning Robotics from Canton. The Rookie Game Changer Award. This award celebrates a rookie team's outstanding success this season. Here are what the judges had to say about our award winners. This novice team came out of the cold to find a way to work together. These young women learned that a team can do more together than the sum of its members. They are small in number, but large in spirit. They started with a vision, solved one problem at a time, and built a competition-ready robot that proved the value of teamwork. Congratulations to Team 8328, Miss Ice Bots from Pelston. Although this team is small, they conspired to build a strong strategy for gameplay. They soared to success with a design and iteration process that resulted in a robot with effective scoring objectives. This six person, all middle school team provided each member with an opportunity to design, build, program, and troubleshoot their bot. Congratulations to team 8427, Robo Ravens from Dearborn Heights. Many teams started crawling or walking, but one team soared above the competition. Their polished presentation and demonstrated design process showcased their talents. Their power cell shooter hit ludicrous speed faster than rookie and veteran teams. Congratulations to Team 8179, Robo Falcons from Dearborn. Now, let's go check in with Chris at the Innovation Station. Okay, we are back at the Innovation Station and we are delighted to be joined now by Heather Beach from Magna International. Heather, hello, how are you today? I'm well, how are you? It's, it's great to be here celebrating all the wonderful accomplishments from first in Michigan this season. But what exactly does Magna International do and, and what kind of products are you working on right now? 
So Magna is a mobility technology company and one of the world's largest suppliers to the automotive industry. What I do is connect students with maybe future opportunities or what it is that the industry is going to need. Um, really trying to understand what the students' passions are and aligning them with what might be possible. I got to ask you about this Romy robot I'm hearing about. Seems like a total game changer in the first community. And, and I understand that it's revolutionized coding uh, specifically. Why are people buzzing about this? What makes the Romy robot really special is that instead of with the first robot where the students have to wait until they're completely done with the build to begin the coding process, with the Romy robot, they can actually code day one. And then as soon as they are done building their robot, uh, they can push out all of that code directly to the first robot. And we're really trying to think about, due to the pandemic, what can we do to sponsor the different teams and support the students in continuing to learn? So what we did is we partnered this year uh, with First in Michigan. And what we were able to do is sponsor a Romy robot for every single FRC team in the state of Michigan. This is really, really exciting. This actually parallels perfectly with what Magna is currently doing. Vehicle software has more lines of code than a space shuttle or even a Boeing 787. That's a ton of code. This means that we need more software engineers, more programmers uh, to design the vehicles. We need coders for the future of mobility. For this reason, the sponsorship perfectly aligns with what we're doing today at Magna and what we'll be doing in the future. Well, why do you think Magna International is excited about the future of the automotive industry? The future of the automotive industry is very, very exciting. There is a shift. It's becoming more of a mobility technology space. Uh, there are some really exciting things coming down the pipeline. Uh, we're really focusing on the health and the safety of, of the driver, of the passengers, and then, of course, on the other, the people in the other cars uh, on the road. So I think that there's going to be some pretty exciting things in the future that the students of FIRST can help us further. Well, we're really looking forward to seeing what those are. And Heather, your passion for what you do and for Magna International really comes through, and it seems like a great place to work. Thank you for sharing a little bit more about it with us. And thank you for everything that the FIRST students are doing. We really look forward to welcoming you to the industry someday. Well, that is incredible stuff from Heather Beach with Magna. And it's time now for the Skills Competition Awards, and I'll see you on board at the next Innovation Station. The Skills Competition Finalist Award. This award celebrates a team's outstanding success with the Skills Competition. The winner of this award came in second place for most points in their group. Here are our finalists. Team 74, Team Chaos from Holland. Team 862, Lightning Robotics from Canton. Team 910, The Foley Freeze from Madison Heights. Team 4381, Twisted Devils from Richland. Team 5460, Strike Zone from Lapeer. Team 6122, Potential Energy from Bear Lake. Team 7160, Ludington O Bots from Ludington. Congratulations. The Skills Competition Winner Award. This award celebrates a team's outstanding success with the Skills Competition. The winner of this award had the most points in their group. Here are our winners. Team 33, the Killer Bees from Auburn Hills. Team 226, Hammerheads from Troy. Team 302, the Dragons from Lake Orion. Team 503, Frog Force from Novi. Team 1684, the Chimeras from Lapeer. Team 2137, the Oxford Robocats from Oxford. Team 2337, the Engineers from Grand Blanc. Team 2767, Strike Force from Kalamazoo. Team 2834, Bionic Blackhawks from Bloomfield Township. Team 3538, Robo Jackets from Auburn Hills. Team 5086, Cadillac Connectors from Cadillac. 8332, Alternate Reality from Rochester. Wow, those were some impressive skills. Let's check in with Chris at the Innovation Station. Before we move on to the next set of awards, we'd like to thank all of the volunteers that made this season happen. Thank you for all that you do. 
And here's a reminder of the kind of event we all want to get back to. Come be a volunteer, help build tomorrow. Volunteering that we do for FRC, best time of my life, it's awesome. At FRC events, there are more than 120 people that are committed to making a difference for everyone involved. It's so rare to find some of your volunteering that you're so passionate about. You only find that with FIRST. I volunteer because I genuinely love what I do and I love to inspire kids as much as I was inspired back when I was competing. And you make amazing friends with these other volunteers. There's networking that happens. There's on-the-job training. It's a full gamut. There's no better way to spend a weekend. Volunteering for FIRST is an amazing experience. As an alumni of the program, I get to experience all the new teams, all the parents, all the new students, and we always have a party with everyone here. Come join the fun. Is there anywhere else you'd rather be than a FIRST event? Come join the fun. Come volunteer. Help build tomorrow. And a special shout out to one group, our judges. Now, on this next installment of Innovation Station, we're going to take a quick look at what Consumers Energy has been up to. And before we get back to more awards, here's a quick look into Michigan's own Consumers Energy. When the world paused in 2020, you were faced with the choice to either sit still or to adapt to a new future. Do you think we had any doubt what you would do? Absolutely not. From building at home to competing in virtual design challenges, you've shown that absolutely nothing can slow you down. And we like that. In fact, we kind of did the same thing. You see, Consumers Energy has been serving Michigan communities for over 135 years. And while 2020 brought a whole new series of challenges to our company, we're still here and we're still serving our communities. Our first in Michigan students face these same challenges as the world around us changed. And despite how difficult they may have been, you're also still here. Still innovating. Still engineering. Still anticipating. Still responding. Still elevating the role of STEM in our communities. And still shaping your futures and Michigan's prosperity for years to come. We're still bringing the energy. Consumers Energy is so proud of everything that you're still doing. And we want you to know that we're still here supporting you and your success. You are STEM's next generation in Michigan, and we need you. Above all, we need innovative minds solving today's problems and creating future opportunities. One of our biggest opportunities is Michigan's clean energy transformation. We need your help. Today is just a start. We want you to succeed and lead.
Our next award is the first Innovation Challenge semi-finalist award, sponsored by Qualcomm. Now let's hear from them. Hey, first teams, Natalie Ducey here from Qualcomm. As this year's season presenting sponsor of the first Innovation Challenge, I just want to take a moment to congratulate all of our semi-finalist teams. You know, innovation now is more important than ever and will continue to be for companies like Qualcomm who are leading the way in 5G and also working with nonprofit organizations like FIRST to inspire the next generation of inventors. I hope everybody that participated in the Innovation Challenge this season really got a flavor of what innovation is all about. And I'm really looking forward to seeing the projects and the real world solutions that teams came up with this year. Congratulations to everyone again, and we'll see you at GIA. Semi-finalists are teams that achieved excellence by designing an innovation for this Game Changers season, Real World Challenge, with an efficient design, sound use of technology, a feasible business model, and a compelling business pitch. Advancing FIRST Robotics competition teams will showcase their innovative solutions and vie for awards at the 2021 Global Innovation Awards, powered by Star Wars, Force for Change, on June 28th through the 30th, at a remote event in front of FIRST strategic partners and a global audience of peers and industry leaders. Here are what the judges had to say about our semi-finalists. This team's innovation is ready to roll out. Using reverse engineering to identify a problem in common brands of wheelchairs, this team developed a solution for those with limited arm mobility to have more independence when moving around. With a clear CAD model, consultation with manufacturing companies, input from real consumers, and a clear-cut business strategy, this team really made sure to hit all of the points of this challenge. Congratulations to Project OmniAxle by Team 4237, Team Lancebot from Stevensville. Are you walking around feeling like you're in a fog? Wouldn't it be nice to be recharged and active? With the help of this team's innovative recharging N95 mask, the world will soon be up and moving at 110%. Congratulations to Team 2619, The Charge from Midland. This innovation hits all the right notes and has a lot of potential. Their energy and passion for FIRST come through in their design of a motion sensor vest to help special needs students get on their feet and moving. Congratulations to Team 6122, Potential Energy from Bear Lake, on their innovative footnote. This team stopped jiggling to focus their attention on a market need and its requirements. Seeing the power of affordable simplicity, they designed their product to meet those requirements and built prototypes that are ready for testing. Congratulations to team 6344, Yale Gigawatts from Yale. This team focused on making physical fitness portable and affordable. With a marketable design and clear business plan, their idea lights the way. They use their problem-solving skills to climb the ladder to success. Congratulations to Team 548, Robostangs from Northville. Expanding existing ideas, this team built a system that runs laps around existing platforms. Their innovative approach with RFID helps find a solution for a positive experience and ensure legs of steel for students who want to stay active. Congratulations to Team 85, Bob, Built on Brains, from Zealand. This team is making sure that people are ready for when bad weather strikes. Minimizing outside noises to mitigate sound triggers, this little device is sure to bring a renewed spark to many lives from this shocking team. Congratulations to Team 862, Lightning Robotics, from Canton. Now let's check in with Chris at the Innovation Station. Back at the Innovation Station, our next guest is Dr. Elmer Lee. Dr. Lee, are you there? Yeah, I'm right here. Awesome. Well, it's good to be with you and welcome aboard the Innovation Station. Speaking of innovation, you're in charge of the Innovate Albion STEM Center. Can you tell us what the center is all about? Sure. So Innovate Albion uh, is a STEM education uh, site that we started, uh, sponsored by Castro Concepts and Conceptual Innovations. The Argosy Foundation has been incredibly generous. They provide us with uh, seed money to help buy computer workstations uh, and to help populate our uh, machine shop. 
so that we can actually teach uh, CAD programming, machining, uh, fabrication, welding as well. And so our mission is uh, very similar to what uh, FIRST is. You saw a need clearly that could benefit a lot of people. What was that? Um, so we started um, looking for really talented engineers out of college, but they were not from our neck of the woods. It was a conscious choice to start mentoring FIRST teams and to start to find talent in our community uh, and to grow it from, from the high school level up. Uh, eventually provide them a position to work uh, here in Albion. You turned a pipe dream into a pipeline of talent and products with a very innovative method of sustaining the center. What is it exactly? Yeah, so we have a, a pretty interesting model here. We're, we're not really surrounded by large corporations. And so what we chose to do was to um, figure out a, a private um, nonprofit relationship uh, where uh, our company uh, would hire interns. Um, the interns would then help us develop uh, cutting edge products uh, and the products would then get sold and we would then turn around and support that internship program. Can you give us an example of the products created? So I, I think one of the best examples here, I asked the kids to essentially develop a differential swerve drive. So they spent a couple summers developing it and we got what we call our swerve mobile up and running. I showed this uh, demo to Boeing uh, and they asked, can you make it carry, you know, 5,000 pounds or 10,000 pounds? A year later, we delivered a product that to Boeing that was based on that Swerve Mobile technology. So the same kids, they uh, helped me uh, assemble that product, test the product, wire it up and program it. And to now, uh, two years later, we've got uh, five or six of these projects that have uh, come to fruition through that one, uh, one seed. Wow. Uh, any other cool projects in the pipeline right now? We have uh, projects contributed by interns that we're, we're developing lift systems, sensorization systems. We're using gyros and encoders. And so all of these technology that we're using, uh, uh, we're finding that FIRST does a really good job of training uh, these students uh, to understand and to develop. <laughs> that is so cool. Elmer, I want to work for you someday. How can someone get involved with one of your internships? The best way to, to get an internship with us is, is to join FIRST. And so I always say that my mentoring in FIRST Robotics has been the best interviewing process uh, I, I could possibly create. Well, I can't wait to see what the future holds for Innovate Albion. Thanks for coming on, Elmer, and sharing a little bit more about what you do. We really appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. Now, because Innovate Albion isn't connected to a Research One University or any recurring grant money, they rely on the ingenuity of first tested students like you. And now here's another short but brilliant lesson from the great Woody Flowers. Many smart people are predicting that future careers and jobs will rapidly and continuously change. In my career, for example, most of the analytical methods used for engineering analysis have dramatically changed. Artificial intelligence is suddenly becoming a very powerful tool. It's even on the verge of becoming a tool designing tool. What happens when big data and AI become potential tool makers? What happens when natural language is applied to solid modeling and stress analysis? You might soon be able to say to your screen, Design a bracket to hold this wheel, keep the deflection to less than one millimeter as the robot collides with a stiff wall at full speed. That time is near. So what will a STEM trained person do? What will we offer to society so society will love us? It's not likely to be commonly applied at technical analysis. However, uniquely human things like recognizing needs, being creative, acting on empathy, demonstrating leadership, designing beautiful things, those uniquely human characteristics will be even more valuable. So those who understand the universe and understand themselves and society will be in a very powerful and satisfied position. That's good stuff.
For our first award, we'd like to recognize a runner-up for this year's Safety Animation Award, sponsored by UL. Their animation was selected by the judges for being most creative out of the 119 submissions and was created to address this year's theme, Safety is Caring. Congratulations go to Team 1711, the Raptors from Traverse City. Now let's check out their animation. Robotics means teamwork. However, building a team is not like building a robot. Instead of metals and wires, a team is made up of people, which are complicated. In order to have a successful team, everyone needs to be shown kindness, respect, and acceptance. Teams are not perfect. They go through both good times and bad times. The foundation to every team is inclusivity, and everyone feeling included is the biggest challenge a team can have. If someone is feeling like an outsider, extend your hand to show them that they are welcome. Encourage everyone to share their ideas. Listen to one another. Acknowledge the problems on your team so that they can be solved. There are no limits to innovations that can be achieved when we work together. Our next award is the Woody Flowers Finalist Award. Presenting the award are the 2010 Championship Woody Flowers Award winner Chris Foltz from Team 234 and the 2003 Championship Woody Flowers Award winner Andy Baker from Team 3940. Hello, I'm Chris Foltz, 2010 Championship Woody Flowers Award winner and mentor on first Team 234, Cyber Blue. Hello, I'm Andy Baker, 2003 Championship Woody Flowers Award winner. I'm a mentor on FRC 3940, Cyber Tooth. Woody Flowers stated, creative activity is one of the few self-rewarding activities. Being creative is like being in love. The love of FRC Robotics has been deep-seated in so many people for so many years. This year, we saw that love and energy get creative with new competition challenges. Teams this year have adjusted their methods, changed their plans, and reached for different goals as we all adapted to the challenges that the world gave us. The safety net of change has been first mentors. Students have eloquently shared in their heartwarming Woody Flowers essays, evidence of how our first robotics competition mentors have continued to show their strength, dedication, and unwavering gracious support of our youth. Woody believes societies get the best of what they celebrate. The Woody Flowers Award celebrates our students by providing them a means to formally recognize their mentors with a WFFA nomination. Students have an opportunity to implement gracious professionalism through high quality work and emphasizing the value of others. Because it is a student's choice, it is meaningful to the mentors. Because the award elevates Woody's tradition of guiding us with clarity and integrity, it is meaningful to the whole FIRST community. The Woody Flowers Award celebrates outstanding communication in the art and science of engineering and design. It was created by Dr. William Murphy in 1996, seeking to recognize one mentor who, in the precisely communicated words of the students, demonstrates the leadership, ethical behavior, technical and communication skills that were exemplified by Woody. At each region and district awards event, one mentor will receive the Woody Flowers Finalist Award. Then one mentor will be selected from the present finalist and renominated past finalist to receive the 2021 Championship Woody Flowers Award. Here in Michigan, you shared high praise for the accomplishments and dedication of your mentors and your teams. Based on your input, we now recognize the contribution of one mentor to the first experience. Like many others, this mentor went above and beyond to find ways to keep their team and surrounding area teams engaged and active during the 2020 and 2021 seasons. This mentor is a former FIRST student who went into an engineering career and returned as a full-time mentor and FIRST volunteer at local events. This mentor uses their skills to teach design methods to current students while also encouraging them to pass their skills and knowledge to younger students in their community. She stays connected with students after graduation, encouraging them to stay involved. She has gone pro in robots and we are excited to recognize her today. Please join us in congratulating the 2021 Michigan District Woody Flowers Finalist Award winner, Nikki Bonzik from Team 107.
Welcome back to Innovation Station and our final report of the day. If you like programming or even teaching programming, you're going to love my next guest. In fact, many of you probably already know or have at least heard of this guy. Meet Nolan Kuza from Bloomfield Hills. What's up, Nolan? Hello, thank you for having me. I gotta say, you have a really impressive resume, but take me through your history with competing in robotics. When and why did you first start? Yeah, so I started robotics all the way back in fifth grade in FLL, the Lego League. So my passion for teaching programming really started when I first did FTC, because I started learning programming and I really liked it and finding the nuances of it. And then I started to want to teach other students on my team and eventually that just spread. And then recently that's all kind of culminated as, as an FRC student, I initiated a project with First Michigan where I ran my own FTC workshops around the state in different places like Bent Harbor and Pelston. And then I also created online resources. I can't believe you had time for school with all that, dude. I mean, you were working these workshops before you even knew how to drive or had a license. Yeah, me, me and my dad had to go around the state, find hotels and everything. Wow. Now, you've been involved in other volunteer-like projects with FIRST, am I correct? Yeah, so one project I, I really liked that I helped recently was um, FIRST in Michigan's FIRST PPE Challenge. So back when the COVID pandemic first started, um, First in Michigan launched a PPE challenge in order to get people to donate personal protective equipment, especially from first teams. So they had started working on a website and they had people working on the back end. And then Gil asked me to help work on the front end, which is basically the part of the website you see. I really loved how through that I was able to take the skills that I gained through first and then apply them to something that would help the community, especially during that time. Well, that's really cool stuff, Nolan. I mean, we talk all the time about the real world applications that FIRST provides its participants and you're carrying that out already while you're still in high school. I mean, that is really, really cool, dude. And I also understand that you're helping to outfit a small educational coding robot called the Romy for the middle school program. What exactly is that about? Yeah, so the Romy robot is a, um, it's a robot that was developed for FRC. First of all, so WPI, which is like the institute that makes all the code for FRC, they basically developed the robot where you can basically run your code and teach without having a full robot. So one project I'm about to get into is making this robot so that it works for FTC, which is the middle school program. So that way the middle school can have this tool as well. Nolan, one other thing we understand you're involved with is the FRC simulator. Could you explain a little bit about that? Yeah, so the FRC simulator is a big initiative that First in Michigan has started recently. And the idea of this project is to create a simulator that can fully simulate FRC robots with different, conf different configurations. And you can run and play multiplayer. And you can also actually use your robot code, like normal robot code, we have a very big team and we're divided into some teams as well. So if somebody wanted to get involved in it, they could reach out to First Michigan. And my role personally is I'm the team leader of match play and robot code. So what I mainly do is make sure that the match play experience is like how it would be in real life and that the coding experience is also how it'd be in real life. Nolan, you've got a very bright future ahead of you. What's uh, kind of next on your to-do list? Yeah, so at the University of Michigan, I'm going to be majoring in computer science at the engineering college. First Robotics has definitely inspired me to, number one, do something involving something mechanical with the programming, something applied, and then also doing something that can impact people positively. Something I was looking at, for example, at University of Michigan is they have a research organization for safe driving vehicles and safety features that involve software. So something like that definitely really intrigues me. Listen, Nolan, you are an inspiration. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Thank you so much. Well, I really enjoyed talking with Nolan and he's a little too shy to toot his own horn, but he was a Dean's List finalist last year in 2020. Speaking of which, I better send you back for this year's Dean's List finalists. First, Dean's List finalists are outstanding, passionate student leaders who demonstrate exemplary effectiveness at attaining first ideals. They were nominated by their teams for their direct contributions and impact on others, exemplifying leadership and commitment on the team and in their community. These first Dean's List finalists are moving on for consideration to be a first Dean's List award winner. Congratulations to the following first Dean's List finalists. Arsini I from Team 503, Hajira N from Team 7147. Naomi E from Team 4810. 
Noah V from Team 217. Jared S from Team 3620. Hagoop A from Team 7692. Carter H from Team 5066. Raja D from Team 226. Sydney S from Team 4776. Abigail K from Team 8179. Hannah P from Team 5166. Leah S from Team 469. Congratulations. The Chairman's Award is the most prestigious award at first. It honors the team that best represents a model for other teams to emulate and best embodies the purpose and goals of FIRST. The Chairman's Award is presented to the team judged to have the most significant, measurable impact of its partnerships among its participants and community over a sustained period, not just a single build season. The winner is able to demonstrate progress towards FIRST's mission of transforming our culture. The winning team will compete against other Chairman's Award winners for the Championship Chairman's Award. Here are what the judges had to say about our winners. They've made a way to grant opportunities to other FIRST teams. This team continues to put up a fight to spread FIRST and advocate for STEM in Michigan. Their motivation may seem irrational, but their impact is felt across the world. Congratulations to Team 1718, the Fighting Pie from Armada. This team puts their heads together to drive engagement at all levels of FIRST. Their collaborations with the Red Wings and NASA help their success take flight. They continue to swim across borders to share their knowledge and skills through mentorship and community service. Congratulations to Team 226, the Hammerheads from Troy. This team forms alliances on and off the field. They are rewriting curriculum near and far by forming a global support network across cultures. These agents of change are proving that they are fed up with barriers to STEAM education. Congratulations to Team 201, the Feds from Rochester. This team rolls across state lanes to support their sponsors in FIRST Robotics. Partnering with Spike, Muddy, and Madonna, this team advertises their program to the community. This team is on the express to be a force for change. Congratulations to Team 1023, the Bedford Express from Bedford. This team leaped to be pals with teams locally and internationally. They jumped at the opportunity to perform safety and software testing. They seeded tadpoles in underserved first communities locally and around the world. They worked around the clock for STEM around the world. Even in China, frogs rule. Congratulations to Team 503, the Frog Force from Novi. This team's enthusiasm and support for FIRST at all levels is not controllable. Turning their small community to the light side by pivoting to support COVID relief, community drives to help those in need to being a beacon for STEM in their Arctic tundra, making a huge impact and accomplishing more with less. There is Mo stopping these youpers. Congratulations to Team 3602, the RoboMos from Escanaba. This team sent others howling in admiration. Through hard work and intelligence, this pack pulled others towards the future. Making their neighborhood better, this fierce team is a gem of Detroit. Congratulations to Team 5577, the Kinematic Wolves from Detroit. Congratulations again to the students and teams who won, and also to all of our teams for your participation this season. And again, thank you to all our mentors and volunteers who made this season a reality. We hope to see you all again for the first Headquarters Awards broadcast on June 26th, and for the Global Innovation Awards on June 30th. Have a great rest of your day, and may the Force be with you.